Welcome to MedEasy. The fetal circulation begins from the placenta, which is a specialized organ connected to the fetus by the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord, as we can see in this cross section, contains one vein and two arteries. The umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood, whereas the umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood. This might sound counterintuitive, but remember that any vessel returning to the heart is called a vein, and any vessel leaving the heart is called an artery, regardless of oxygen levels. This is a diagram of the fetal circulation. First, the umbilical vein carries the oxygenated blood from the placenta, and most of it is conducted to the inferior vena cava through a shunt called ductus venosus. This shunt allows the blood from the umbilical vein to bypass the liver. However, a small amount of this blood still enters the liver sinusoids to supply and nourish the liver. Here, the oxygenated blood mixes with deoxygenated blood returning from the baby's lower limbs before it enters the right atrium. From there, the blood moves towards the foramen ovale to enter the left atrium, bypassing the pulmonary circulation. So foramen ovale is the second shunt. The deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava passes through the right atrium towards the right ventricle. You may wonder why the blood coming from the inferior vena cava is directed towards the foramen ovale and left atrium while blood from the superior vena cava passes through the right ventricle. The reason is that there's a valve on the inferior vena cava called the eustachian valve, which guides the blood towards the foramen ovale. After the blood has passed through the right ventricle, it will go through the main pulmonary trunk, but bypasses the lungs by entering through the third and last shunt in fetal circulation, which is the ductus arteriosus. Due to high fetal pulmonary resistance, the blood favors passing through this shunt towards the less resistant descending aorta. Now that we understand fetal circulation, let's discuss what happens immediately after birth. When an infant takes his first breath and his lungs are inflated, this causes vascular resistance in the lungs to decrease dramatically. And this low pressure favors the blood going into the lungs, which will then flow towards the left atrium, increasing the pressure there, and the increased pressure gradient in the left atrium versus the right atrium will push the septum primum towards septum secundum, sealing the foramen ovale. The resulting depression in this area is called fossa ovalis. Placental separation leads to decreased production of prostaglandins. This decrease is important for ductus arteriosus closure, which is why agents that inhibit the production of prostaglandins, like NSAIDs, for example endomethacin or ibuprofen, are used clinically to induce closure of ductus arteriosus, especially in preterm infants. This, in addition to the rising oxygen tension when the baby begins to breathe, is what leads the ductus arteriosus to be obliterated and form the ligamentum arteriosum. Now let's talk about fetal postnatal derivatives. We already mentioned that foramen ovale will close leaving a depression in the heart called fossa ovalis, and that the ductus arteriosus will close and form the ligamentum arteriosum. We still have to talk about the umbilical arteries, the umbilical veins, and ductus venosus. As for the umbilical arteries, they will functionally close within minutes after birth, and the lumen will fibrose completely within months. The distal portion of the umbilical arteries, however, forms the medial umbilical ligaments, but proximally the umbilical arteries will remain open as the superior vesical arteries. So essentially, the superior vesical arteries branch from the internal iliac arteries and their distal portion is occluded as the medial umbilical ligaments. And since the artery is occluded, blood will be rerouted through collateral vessels when it returns to the heart. The umbilical vein will form the ligament anterior hepatis, a round ligament in the lower margin of falciform ligament. The ductus venosus, which courses from the ligament anterior to the inferior vena cava, will be obliterated as well, and will form the ligamentum venosum. Last derivative we'll discuss is the allantois and uracus. They are not part of the fetal circulation, which is why I put them last. In early embryonic development, the bladder is connected to the umbilical cord by the allantois, but around the seventh week of development, the allantois is obliterated and becomes a fibrous cord that is referred to as the uracus, which drains the fetus's urinary bladder. After birth, the uracus becomes the median umbilical ligament. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, Medizi, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.